We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. This will help us grow. Also note, buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also. Thank you for supporting our show. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. Today's uh, episode is 31 and uh, what do you think of the new hat? Nice hat, huh? So this is the new Easy Street hat. Uh, just came out. Um, you can get one if you like one. You go down to our description down below, and uh, you can get them off of Amazon. Uh, they're nice hats. They're very comfy, and uh, yeah. So there you go. Looks good, huh? So anyway, uh, today I thought it would be interesting to talk about what to do if you're stuck at home with the kids. <laughs> And uh, today I was uh, playing around doing some live feeds on Facebook and it kind of occurred to me, it's like, you know, this is a great time to turn this into a teaching moment. And, uh, you know, there's always entertainment like the videos and all that stuff. But, you know, that stuff gets old and it's, you know, one-on-one um, -on -one time with the family. You know, they say board games, but I don't know many folks that do that anymore. But uh, one of the things uh, you might want to get into, and the timing is just right, is gardening. And uh, there's two types I want to talk about. There's your regular garden, where, and you don't have to have a yard. If you just got a porch or a deck, you can do little things off that. Um, it's a good teaching experience, or off the windowsill and stuff. But another thing you could do, if, uh, if you can, is uh, microgreens. And if you go to YouTube and type in microgreens, you can find out what they are. And what they are basically is uh, you have to order some seeds, uh, which are not that expensive, under $10. You can do sunflower. Uh, a lot of people like to do sunflower seeds. Um, but you can do all kinds of sprouts and things like that. And they're, uh, it only takes seven days to go through the whole process. Uh, the first couple of days, you just get a pan. You get either dirt or you get something like a coconut core and stuff uh, that can hold water and you put a cover over it and you put the seeds in there and water them and then they uh, uh, get to a point where they need to germinate and then you open up the lid and then you put light over them for the rest of the time and before you know it you have two inches worth of little microgreens and you can uh, they're delicious some of them are great just to eat straight others you can put in salads on hamburgers all kinds of things you can do with them so uh, and uh, the turnaround times fast for kids that don't have a uh, patience that would be perfect to do a little microgreens around the house otherwise it might be a good time to maybe uh, consider that garden uh, I actually put a video together in my backyard of what we do with our garden and I was going to show you kind of a fun little thing to grow is called a sugar peas but we we have uh, uh, tomatoes and stuff out there too and the other thing is my dog loves my little sugar peas so I was trying to do this video and she's trying to tell me you know, I want, <laughs> give me a sugar pea. So it was kind of a battle trying to do the video. But anyway, uh, without further ado, here's a little video I made for you guys in the backyard. Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob. And today is a day of just talking about making the best out of the situation. I know a lot of folks out there are probably going to be stuck at home. Kids are out of school. We're all getting kind of in a quarantine kind of mode trying to build up things and one of the suggestions I wanted to make and I saw this from uh, the news uh, <laughs> come here uh, <laughs> and the news here in Arizona is this is the time come here come here this is the time there's a reason why this dog is barking come here I'll show you come here is this is a great time to learn how to plant stuff so what you see behind me is, instead of going to Costco, come here. <laughs> instead of going to Costco and buying toilet paper, buy yourself some tomato plants. So these are Costco tomato plants. And you can get them almost full, full grown. Uh, well, not full grown, but real young. For like 12 bucks each. So I got six of them in, in here. 
and we just put these in a couple weeks ago and I got tomatoes coming and this thing is flourishing and it'll be kind of fun to have the tomatoes but one of the things I wanted to tell you about is uh, in our garden and it's spring for you guys up north so you can start thinking about this is I'm growing a lot of sugar, <coughs> sugar peas and the reason my dog is barking come here is she loves sugar peas so here let me show you a little closer And sorry for the movement of the camera, but the reason my dog is a nut is she loves sugar peas. And these things are delicious. And uh, <laughs> uh, Sarah loves them. So here, let's give let's give her a sugar pea. Come here. Come here. So uh Hey, they're healthy for the dog too. <laughs> they say give dogs green beans. Well, sugar peas are just as good. Um, and uh, I get probably, I bet you I've gotten up 10 pounds of these things. They're really easy to grow. They're real hardy. And uh, um, it's a successful plant. And your uh, pet might love them. So, uh, anyway, the kids are home. Um, this would be a great time to uh, think about maybe uh, teaching them how to plant stuff. Uh, one of the suggestions I want to make is go to YouTube and look up microgreens. Microgreens are really good because uh, they're, you can have them fully grown in a week. Um, and so get on the internet, find a... In Nevada there's a really good seed company and you can grow uh, uh, sunflower seeds you can get all kinds of different kinds of uh, uh, pods and stuff like that they're really good eating and uh, you grow them to a little small size and you cut them off they're like two inches high put them in your salads put them in your hamburgers um, you can eat them straight they're delicious and the kids will get a fast success rate you know kids aren't very patient and stuff like this takes a long time but come here and this child of mine uh, is gonna be a, a real pain in the neck while I'm trying to do this video we'll just grab her another sugar pea and like I said you can freeze these things and they last a long time my dog's obsessed but uh, like I said, I've probably gotten 10 pounds of sugar peas, and they're delicious. You can put them in salads, you can make uh, uh, stir fries. Oh my gosh, just cook them straight. They're just absolutely delicious and easy to grow, and they're real hardy with freezes. They, uh, they've they survived a couple of freezes. Um, but anyway, uh, there's all, all kinds of other things you can grow. Uh, we also grow our own strawberries. Uh, don't get a tons of them, but... Um, boy they're delicious uh, I've had plants that I wasn't successful for but that's how you learn so guys while we're in this quarantine or trying to stay home more and the kids are home let's take advantage of it teach them how to grow stuff uh, I'm in the city and uh, uh, you don't have to have an acre of land to learn how to grow stuff um, this garden here uh, is a little bit more advanced than our older ones and uh, uh, we're really happy with it and uh, I also have broccoli growing in here and uh, so yeah suggestion uh, take a bad situation and turn it into something good and then back in the day your kids would go back and go remember when we we're all stuck at home and you taught me how to grow stuff and then they're adults and have families and they have yards and they're growing stuff because you taught them so uh, anyway guys suggestion hope that was helpful to you and uh, let's make the best of it <laughs> gotta get some more peas for the dog talk to you later so there you go guys do a little gardening uh, or start a little garden and by the way it doesn't have to be vegetables do flowers um, it's all good to learn and if you've never done it before get on YouTube and get some ideas and Run over to Home Depot, not too many people there. 
grab a couple of bags of dirt and some uh, pots and a little bit of a uh, old little fertilizer and stuff and you're set to go and uh, it's a good thing and uh, who knows it might get you going on something you uh, a new hobby and uh, this you don't have to have a giant backyard to do it so I, I hope that was a helpful uh, idea to you there's a lot of crap going on today uh, it's a Saturday they've been announcing more uh, countries closing their borders and things like that and uh, more schools are going to shut down and uh, the stores are insane and uh, in fact I, I did a little live feed on my uh, uh, Facebook and I said hey if you guys are out there shopping send me pictures of what you're seeing <laughs> and, uh, it's just insane now it's just empty shelves all over and stuff and and the sad thing is I don't think you're gonna see the shelves fill up as quick as you used to see in the past Times are changing. You know, you have to think about this. Sherry and I were talking about it. How often have you ever seen a worldwide problem uh, or crisis? Uh, I mean, we've seen wars and we've seen skirmishes. We've seen 9-11. We've seen all kinds of stuff. Uh, but a whole world is affected by this. So um, if you're not taking this serious or if you're still saying it's just the flu, uh, you need to get educated and you need to uh, step it up. Uh, hopefully you've done some prepping. Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, there's some uh, recipes coming out on the Internet of how to make your own hand sanitizers and things like that. But, um, you know, uh, water's not going to get shut off right away or, or power. So you can buy frozen vegetables. You can buy... Uh, uh, like Sherry and I, we just made a big potato salad. That's going to last a few days. I just made some homemade chicken soup, which is so easy to make. And uh, produce is a lot easier to get than, like, toilet paper. Um, anyway, uh, and if you can't, you know, you can buy frozen versions of a lot of stuff, uh, cut up carrots and cut up uh, celery and things like that. Um and make things that will last a few days. Spaghetti is really good for, uh, if you have a small family, it could last uh, two days. Um, think like that. Um, and, uh, you know, tuna fish and, and a lot of canned things that you don't have to freeze. But if you have a freezer, get things uh, that you can freeze. Uh, hamburger, buy the larger quantities and break it up into one-pound pieces, and you'll save money that way. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you just got to be clever. And you're going to have to get a little bit more homebound and you're going to have to do some of your own cooking. Either that or go buy yourself a lot of TV dinners. I'll learn how to make your own pizzas. Uh, and the kids can get involved in that. So make cooking a little bit more fun for the family and the kids will get involved. They might learn a few things out of it and maybe you will too. After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, Teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon and strong available at amazon at low cost and free shipping ranger rob poopy bags yep uh that's our that's our product and uh boy if you want to give them a try just go to amazon they're very affordable and they are the best dog waste bags i know that you'll ever use once you get them you'll never go back uh they're they are deeper and they are wider and they, they stay away from your hands when you turn them inside out they have handles bigger handles they're easy to use uh, so you turn it inside out, you immediately can tie a knot in it. No biggie. Uh, they smell like lemon. They're strong. They don't break. They're good stuff. So yeah, check them out. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. That helps our channel, helps our radio station. At just and uh, and they are eco friendly. So uh, yeah, the news is interesting. Uh, it seems like uh, uh, lots of announcements. Lots of uh, countries uh, closing their doors. Uh, they're being cautious, and I rather, I know it's like, well, why are some schools closing before they even have an issue? And I gotta appreciate the fact that they're doing this stuff before it happens. 
because uh, all it takes is one or two kids to show up in a school and then the whole school's exposed and then it's a chain reaction. So uh, uh, our leadership, now I don't want to get into, oh, who's the president and who's doing what and stuff. I do appreciate that in this last week I've seen cooperation and teamwork on both sides and that's wonderful. And uh, I see a team that's tired and exhausted. Our president looks kind of tuckered out. Our Pence looks tuckered out. They have lots of people. And they're bringing in private industry to help out. And uh, your Walmart, your Targets, all those people are going to be setting up uh, uh, temp um, uh, drive-up testing stations. They're doing what they can. Uh, it doesn't matter what leader we have in there. There is bureaucracy to deal with, and they've been dealing with it. And uh, uh, is it as fast as we all want it? Of course not. But let's give credit where credit's due. Not, both sides have done a wonderful job of throwing away the bickering and the name-calling, and they got some really important things done, and, and relatively fast. And uh, so you got to give them uh, kudos for that. And uh, uh, our president was smart. He handed it off to a person that could focus on this, so that's what Pence has been doing. And uh, that's how it should be, is handed off to someone capable. And Pence has been on in front of the camera with his team every single day, and... Uh, uh, you got to give him credit. Good for him. Uh, it doesn't matter what side of, of the fence you guys are on. That would be a hard job for any party. Uh, and there's a lot more hard decisions to make. There could be um, more restrictions between states. There could be more school shutdowns, businesses being closed, and uh, making money accessible to people that uh, are hourly and that can't um, and don't get paid sick leave and stuff like that, or giving companies money that are paying sick leave for people to be home with their kids. That uh, anything associated with this uh, virus stuff is uh, being addressed, and that's good. Uh, and think about the bureaucracy to do that, and getting tax cuts, and getting the IRS to to cooperate, and all that stuff. That's a lot of stuff, and. Uh, and both sides of the party have been involved in doing this. And I just want to say, great, good for them. Is it perfect? No. And are they going to make mistakes? Yes. And are they going to be late with tests and stuff? Probably. And, and uh, um, you know, they just see things from their station. They may have just signed the check for a million face masks. And yet it could stay, take five to days to a week before it gets to the locations where they really need to be. They're done everything they can at the higher ups, but there's also the processes to get all that stuff distributed, uh, drivers to different states where they need to be at most. It's a lot. You need to sit down and, and stand in other people's shoes that are trying to help us. And I got to commend the United States for starting to think ahead of the, of the game before they were behind the eight ball. Now uh, they're making decisions before things happen and that's good and and um especially i mean for example me and sherry have the concern of having a mother-in-law in a uh, assisted living who's 82 and uh if something and, and so with all these new national emergency state emergency uh rankings um uh, cities doing it uh, it's speeding up the process for everything. So I know like at our assisted living, they've gotten very strict of who comes in and out. They don't even let the UPS man come into the doors and leave boxes off at the assisted living. They say, leave them outside. We will get them. And uh, they've actually sent out restrictions to how we can actually visit our, our mother-in-law who's in assisted living. Uh, strangers are not uh, coming in. Uh, they're knocking off some of their... Uh, get-togethers, which is kind of sad because it's important that they have social time, but not at the expense of dying. So we all have tough decisions and we all have sacrifices and concerns. Um, we need to be optimistic. We have to be realists at the same time. Uh, a lot of our freedoms uh, feel like they're being infringed upon. Uh, do we like it? No, none of us do. do we, is it necessary? What else would you do? We can't have people just running around doing anything they want, especially if they're contagious. 
uh, this coronavirus is worse than um, the flu. It's not the flu, guys. It's something else. And there are starting to report that the it does damage to people that who who may have got it and are are released and say they're over it. But it's actually 30 to 40 percent I have it. They're saying right now, at early stages, not for sure. Um, that it's damaging people's lungs, and so it could be a long-term damage, so, which means if you got it a second or third time, could be devastating. So we don't know for sure, and we have to give them time to find this stuff out. It takes research. China wasn't the best of giving us the feedback we need to know of the, of, of the end results of what happens after people are cured. Uh, each country's some of them are doing better than others about reporting their status, doing reports, doing analysis. All those things are important, but they take time. And uh, so we have to act like this is really something serious. And if it isn't, what's that going to hurt? Uh, if it is, uh, then we're at least ahead of the game a little. So we all need this to let our guard down a little bit and we also also we still got to always be vigilant to make sure that there's no overstepping going on by our government that could easily happen so uh um i'd love to hear your comments below uh good bad or indifferent but be professional uh, what are your concerns and what are some of your problems out there right now i know there's things that haven't there's test kits that haven't got to their places uh, there's a lot of things still not uh, there. The grocery stores are really frustrating. The thing is, how fast can the grocery stores replenish your shelves as well as they did in the past? I don't think they will be. And I think we're going to all be a little shocked or a lot shocked. So uh, food for thought, just having a little discussion about it. Love to hear your comments and your opinions down below. Please be professional and we'll discuss more of it as we go. Um, uh, I do have some guest shows I'm being guests. I'm going to be on, uh, what is it, Radio Hope next Friday and a couple other shows coming up. And I have some interesting shows and interviews coming up on this show, show and other shows. <laughs> so, busy week. And uh, let's see. Um, but, yeah, so uh, keep an eye out. Some of our shows are lighthearted. Other ones are serious. That's what Easy Street's all about. We can do what we want here. We don't have to just be gloom and doom. There's a lot of positive things that could come out of this. So uh, let's, uh, let's be optimistic, but vigilant and realistic. So just a reminder and a little bit of cuteness, we are only two days out before this new little girl joins our family, and her name is probably going to be Belle, uh, but it could change. Uh, she'll be nine weeks old when we get her. Uh, it's killing us because we had to wait for her to get spaded. Uh, uh, and uh, it'll be Tuesday. Today's Saturday. So we actually got Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday we get her. We're excited. And it's funny. I mean, every day something's coming in from Amazon or Chewy. And um, we got dog treats coming in and different puppy chows. And, and uh, it's kind of neat to be excited about something. All the crap going on kind of nice to have something else to think about and uh, I'm sure it will make some cuteness for some of our shows we are going to start a new playlist on our channel um, that'll be life with bell or something like that but uh, uh, if this dog does not look like a bell to you <laughs> her name being bell she's a cute little thing she's uh, a German Shepherd they call her cattle dog which means that she'll, she'll be a smaller version of a German Shepherd. And uh, we always wanted to get a German Shepherd, um, but they are a very big dog, and Cinder's already a pretty big dog. And the fun part is also to see how well Cinder does, our chocolate lab, who is turning out well, seven and a half. And uh, she's never been a mom, and uh, but she's a great dog, and I think she'll at first probably be a little shocked because she's never had another dog in the house. Um, we do have a cat, um, but I think Cinder's very playful dog and energetic for her age. I think she'll, uh, uh, those two will grow in each other, but at first they will be interesting to see how they interact 
we hope we don't have any problems. But um, it's kind of fun to have something to look forward to, something new for the channel also. Um, we'll probably uh, do a little discussion on training, but we'll also just enjoy the fact of uh, having a new puppy and so many uh, uh, work, you know, how well this dog does with Cinder the Chocolate Lab. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. So once again on the show, we're just like we're being optimistic. At the same time, life is still life, and so we still need to move forward. And, uh, hey, why not bring a puppy into our life? <laughs> All right, guys, we're getting towards the end of the show. And for a final note, maybe a little seriousness here, but not too much. Throughout the show, I'm hoping to show a little optimism, a little bit of caring. Um but most of all, vigilance and realizing we really do have a big problem on our hands. Is this panic? No. Uh, life is life and things go on and, and illnesses come and go. Uh, but this one's a worldwide. The whole entire world is affected. And this is much more than what we're used to. And yes, a lot of our uh, freedoms... Um, our normal normalcy, whatever you want to call it, of, of life is going to change. And we hope it's temporary. Um, but what else would we do? Uh, this is the time to, to put a little faith in our, in our leadership, put a lot of faith in each other, a lot of faith in our community and our families, uh, we can't be selfish all the time. Uh, we have to think of others. That means if we are sick or, or things, we have to stay home. And uh, we have to think about cause and effect. So what you do could affect not just one, but hundreds if you were sick and went out and uh, didn't take precautions. Um if you can't run out and buy all these things, people are buying all that stuff. There is simpler ways to do things. Uh, even with toilet paper, there's alternatives. Um, just be clever. You know, there's one way to look at toilet paper. We went thousands of years without it before we even invented it. And there's other tools out there. There's like, uh, you can actually buy toilet seat adapters that actually spray water and stuff. You can remember cloth diapers. Uh, that's kind of the same. You could use, you could come up with sets of sheets and stuff, um, and actually, or old T-shirts and stuff like that. Throw them into. A, remember the buckets we had for the diaper, the diaper pail we called it, and then uh, you know laundry. You know, if there's a will, there's a way. When it comes to food. Um, you can either go the simple way and get frozen stuff and all that stuff or get down and dirty and start making your food and learn how to make a meatloaf, learn how to make spaghetti, learn how to make potato salad like Sherry and I have done or, or a chicken soup or learn how to make a split pea soup in large quantities. And if you have a freezer, freeze it. But I'm just saying we need to step up. We can't sit here and expect government and people to save us all the time. It's up to us, all of us, all branches, to move forward and do positive things with us. And we ha all have a responsibility. And uh, that includes me and you and all of us. We can't um, always think it's all about me. It's time to think about us as a country, as an individual, a community. We work together. We think about cause and effect. And we love one another, respect one another, and give everybody the benefit of the doubt. That can change, but give them benefit of the doubt. There's a lot of folks working hard for us. Um, there's a lot of countries you don't want to be in right now, and a lot of socialist companies, com <laughs> countries are having a hard time with keeping up with medical and things like that. So uh, learn from all this, and hopefully our country will learn from all this about inventory, building things at home, um, make sure we don't uh, farm out our safety and medical and prescription stuff out to other countries. There's a lot to be learned here too. 
Sometimes it takes a slap in the face to get a little bit smarter. And so, anyway, guys, be safe, be optimistic, be realistic. Maybe say if you got words to God, if you have some faith, uh, an extra prayer or two. This is time to talk to him. So, guys, have a great day, and thanks for listening. Until next time, bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.